Welcome back to FT Markets. Punches are being thrown already in the UK election campaign. Polling day is only a few weeks away. But how fit is the UK economy? And will the election make any difference? With me to discuss this is James McCormack, who's head of sovereign ratings at Fitch. James, welcome to the Financial Times. Now tell me, are elections something that credit rating agencies such as yours watch very closely in advanced economies? Um, not normally. It's not usually something that changes the, uh, it moves the needle or changes our view on, on the ratings very much. Obviously, uh, in the UK, there's, there's a fiscal story to think about and there's, there's the growth outlook, which is, which is much more important. A, a lot of ratings. uncertainty, but that doesn't necessarily affect the uh, fiscal dynamics. If you look at our first chart, though, something you presumably are concerned about, as ever, the UK fiscal deficit. We've put it here in comparison with the Eurozone um, not looking quite so favourable. Uh, and against the US. How big a problem is UK public finances as far as the rating agencies such as Fitch is concerned? Yeah, no, it's, it's a problem and the deficit obviously is very large, has been even bigger in the, in the past and I think the, the key here is that we see the deficit in decline. And that's our the trend is going in the right the, direction. The trend is going in the right direction. And we think that will be maintained regardless of the, the election outcome. I mean, both parties, both of the major parties, have more or less committed to continued fiscal consolidation. But the question is, at what pace? And how long does it take to, to kind of get that fiscal correction? But the trend, the trend well, What about if we have a, a coalition government? That, that's one of the big uncertainties about this election. Yeah, no, that, there's definitely risks because the debt to GDP ratio is quite high. I mean, debt to GDP, the way we look at it, and we measure it the same way we would in Europe, is around 90%. For, for, this is just the deficit. That's this a, is just a deficit. So, so, you, so you need to have a deficit reduction in order to eventually have a debt reduction, yeah. which we don't quite have yet in the UK. So it's important that this trend continue. And you're right, if there is a political uh, dynamic which interrupts that, then that's obviously less favorable for us. Okay. Now, perhaps of more concern would be the, the current account deficit, which we have on our second chart. And, and here, the UK is really a, an outlier. I mean, compared to the US even, it's very much greater uh, as yeah. its share of GDP and uh, the Eurozone, of course, in surplus. Uh, this is um, becoming to worry, uh, more of a worry for people like yourself. Yeah, this, this is also a, a big number when you think about it as a percentage of GDP between 4 and 5% for an advanced economy, a little bit unusual. If you dig through the numbers, though, in, in the UK, it's a very open economy in terms of the investment flows. And part of the reduction in the current account position is a reflection of investment income flows. So the trade deficit hasn't really changed that much. The services surplus hasn't really changed, but income streams have changed. Uh, it's a reflection of the UK's um, position as a sort of haven, particularly from sort of Eurozone problems. Yeah, it's actually more an issue of UK investments abroad and the income that's generated by those investments declining over time. And the investments in the UK, the returns on those haven't declined. So on a net basis, the UK is kind of a loser in, in that perspective. But those, a lot of those investments are in Europe where you would expect the returns to. to I have to ask the question that. again. Do you think the election makes much difference to the trend um, in the current account? Yeah, not, even less so on this. I think on the fiscal side, you could make an argument that there will be different paces of consolidation. On the current account side, I don't think the election will have much of an impact. Another big concern for international investors, of course, would be the constitutional issues. We had the Scottish referendum, the Scottish independence referendum last September. The possibility now is that we might get a referendum on exiting the European Union. Um, does that have any implications for the UK's mm. rating? It could do. Um, and I think a lot of that will depend on what the conditions are and what the arrangements would be with a, uh, the UK and Europe if the UK were to, to, to exit Europe. At this point in time, we don't know. We don't know what the economic uh, environment would be like because we don't know what that relationship would, would be like. So we can't say if it's a net positive or a net negative. At this point, it's kind of a big unknown. So it is of some concern because it's unknown, uh, but we don't know actually whether it's uh, decidedly positive or decidedly negative. Okay, James, thank you very much. We'll stop at that point. So uh, the current account is the figure to watch for the UK. Whether the UK election will make much difference to that is a bigger question.